Many people consider the modern supercarrier a city at sea. This is undoubtedly correct, with between 5,000 and 6,000 people relaxing, working, eating, and sleeping on board for months. But life on board an aircraft carrier is unquestionably arduous and exhausting. Still, it can be thrilling, particularly for the men and women who work on the flight deck, flying and landing jets on a sliver of a runway. It's unlike anywhere else on the planet, for better or worse. An aircraft carrier is a ship with a flight deck which serves as a runway for aircraft at the most basic level. An aircraft carrier is one of the strongest assets any armed forces can have. Carriers can reach speeds of more than 35 knots or 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour, allowing them to travel across the ocean in weeks. Carrier groups are currently stationed across the world, ready to deploy at any time. When the U.S. Navy wants to make a big impression on someone, it sends them aboard one of its gigantic aircraft carriers. It's not only the size of a supercarrier that impresses, it's the frantic scene on its flight deck. When the crew is fully operational, it can launch or land a plane every 25 seconds, taking up a fraction of the space needed on a standard landing strip. How do they work in the middle of the ocean? To begin with, most people have little access to the outside world. The flight deck, hangar, and fantail all boast stunning views of the sea and sky, but they're so busy and dangerous that only a few people are allowed to visit during normal operations. The highest levels of the island are secure, but due to sensitive operations and limited space, many individuals cannot come and go. A sailor who works below decks may not see daylight for weeks at a time. Conditions on board are much tighter than in a typical metropolis. Personnel must scale nearly vertical steps and push past one another in small hallways to travel from one location to the next. The sleeping rooms or berthing compartments are exceedingly cramped. Enlisted soldiers share a compartment with around 60 other people who sleep in single bunks known as racks, stacked in threes. Everyone in the chamber shares a restroom and a tiny common area with a television connected to one of the carrier's satellite antennas and a small storage bin and upright locker for clothes and personal items. Officers do have more fabulous rooms and more excellent furnishings, but they also have a restricted amount. Everyone on board must adjust to the cramped conditions. Jobs are diverse, precisely as they would be in a typical city. The air wing, which consists of approximately 2,500 men and women who fly and repair the aircraft. The ship's company, which consists of over 3,000 personnel, ensures that all aspects of the carrier are working properly, from cleaning dishes and cooking meals to managing weaponry and maintaining the nuclear reactors. The ship has everything its passengers require to live comfortably, even if it isn't as luxurious as they would want. On board, there are various galleys or kitchens and mess halls that serve up to 18,000 meals every day. The ship also contains a large laundry facility, doctors and dentists offices, a variety of businesses, and a bank of satellite telephones for staff to communicate with their family. The Structure of an Aircraft Carrier the U.S. Nimitz-class supercarriers are among the most complicated machines on the planet, with approximately a billion separate pieces. They are, nevertheless, conceptually quite simple. They're made to accomplish four tasks. Overseas transportation of various aircraft, aerial takeoff and landing, assist in military operations as a mobile command center, and all of the people involved in these activities should be housed together. A carrier must combine the elements of a ship, an air force base and a sizable city to achieve these objectives. It is required to have, among other things, a flight deck. This is the flat area in the ship's upper deck where the planes can take off and land. A hangar deck. This is the space below the deck where the aircraft can be stored when not in service. An island. A building on top of the flight deck where the officers can direct flight and ship operations. Enough space for the crew to work and live a propulsion system and a power plant for moving the ship from one location to another and generating electricity for the entire ship, other methods for providing food and fresh water, as well as carrier-based radio, newspapers, and television stations are all available. The hull. This is the ship's main body that floats in the water. The ship's hull is made up of several thick inches of steel plates that are highly sturdy. This massive body provides excellent fire and battle damage protection. The keel, the iron backbone at the bottom of the ship, the flight deck, and the hangar deck are three horizontal structures that sustain the ship's structural integrity. The hull section below the water surface is rounded and narrow, whilst the piece above the waterline flares out to produce the spacious flight deck. 
The ship's lower portion features a double bottom, meaning there are two layers of steel plating. The ship's base plate and another layer above it separated by a gap. The twin bottom adds more excellent protection against torpedoes and other maritime mishaps. The second layer will avoid a major leak if the enemy hits the bottom of the ship, breaking a breach in the outer steel layer. Takeoff and landing on an aircraft carrier. A plane must gain enough lift to power takeoff from an aircraft carrier's short flight deck before taking off. The wind contributes to some of this lift force, but onboard gear provides the majority of the power. Four catapults on the ship's flight deck provide lift for the planes. Pistons located inside cylinders drive the catapults. Before departure, the catapult shuttle or the component of the catapult that sits on the flight deck surface is coupled to the plane's front wheels. The cylinders of the catapult fill with steam once the aircraft is ready for takeoff. Inside the cylinders, the steam generates a high-pressure zone. The catapults launch the plane after the pistons unlock. Planes can accelerate from 0 to 150 miles per hour in 3 seconds using the force of these catapults. Landing a plane, like a takeoff, necessitates the cooperation of various machines aboard the ship and the ground staff monitoring. To land a plane, the pilot flies above the flight deck and connects a hook on the aircraft to the arresting wire on the ship. The plane is slowed by a hydraulic system connected to the arresting wire. It can bring the plane to a halt in a distance of 300 feet. There are four similar lines on the ship, but pilots always attempt to catch the third one because of its safety. Furthermore, due to the small length of the landing strip, landing a plane necessitates careful coordination between the pilot and the ship crew. When several planes are waiting to land, they form an orville formation around the aircraft carrier. The traffic control gives the planes the authorization to land one by one. The Landing Signal Officer, or LSO, can employ radio or light signals to guide a plane that isn't on target for landing. The LSO has the authority to order the plane to abort a landing attempt. The Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or FLALS, directs pilots to the flight deck. FLALS is a system of lenses that generates light beams at various angles. The different light beams provide the pilot with information about their position in the aircraft. If the pilot sees an amber light next to a series of green lights, the jet is on the right track. The plane is misaligned with the runway if the amber light is out of sync with the other lights. If the plane doesn't grab one of the arresting lines as it lands, it'll take off from the ship again. The plane's engines are immediately turned to full power as it lands as a precaution. The plane is pushed to the side of the landing strip if it successfully catches the arresting wire and comes to a halt. Although aircraft carrier mishaps are uncommon, crew members can be propelled overboard by a jet engine or harmed by onboard mechanical problems. Aircraft carriers are outfitted with fire trucks and water tanks to help prevent injuries during landing. Crew members also wear inflatable coats if they're tossed overboard. For search and rescue, the jackets are equipped with lights. And that will be all for today's video. Thank you for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.